Good morning. My name is Len. I'm your host of um, Target Justice v. Garland, a podcast about an extraordinary lawsuit. Of course, now we have more than one lawsuit. Yeah, so with me today, uh, our legal act engine that just keeps going, Anna Toledo. Anna, my friend, how are you feeling? Hi, good morning, Lynn. I'm great. I'm, we're working like the Energizer Bunny nonstop to shut this heinous program down. Yes. Tell me how many ongoing losses uh, we now have. Well, currently we have obviously TJV Garland that I have to go to the Supreme Court on that. And then we have three additional FOIA lawsuits that are going on. The first one we have already talked about, the FBI. And then there's two more that we're going to talk about today. Uh, to make people understand, because it's really important that everybody is well acquainted with these procedures so that they can eloquently talk about them and, and tell other people about them. So that's, you know, our mission is for you to please listen carefully so that you can coherently tell people it's not craziness, this is real. Yeah. So the short answer <laughs> to my question is, Four. We now have four lawsuits. Let's go to the presentation. So we now have four ongoing lawsuits. Let's run down the history lane to update people. The number one lawsuit is the targeted Justice v. Garland filed in January of 2023 and currently waiting for filing certiorari to the Supreme Court. And for um, uh, those of us who are not uh, legally educated, just like me, uh, Sir Teorati is filing to consider the case at the pleasure of the court. Did I get it right? Yeah, it's a discretion of the court because it's not it's not like an appeal. The difference from an appeal is that it's you have a right for the, of the for the court to review it. On the certiorari, it's a discretionary a uh, right. All right, that that's a good correction. I uh, I should have uh, put at the discretion of the court instead of um, at the pleasure of the court. This one was filed on March fourth, twenty twenty four, in the U.S. District Court for the Southern Southern District of Texas. Uh, it's called Target Justice v. FBI, and it's an action under FOIA. Um, um, please remind me what FOIA stands for. Freedom, Freedom of Information, information Act. Act. Correct. So we have a whole episode about it. Uh, see episode 55 called Dead People Have No Expectations of Privacy. And we basically, what Target Justice did in a very uh, sophisticated sort of legal request, we asked to provide uh, information about people who have been removed from the TSDB handling codes three and four, which is where targeted individuals are, after they die. So as far as this lawsuit, I look at PACER, and the latest action was on May 28th. It was filed by you, by attorney for the plaintiffs, and it's called Joint Initial Conference Report of the Meeting and Joint Discovery Case Management Plan. Well, there's really no discovery going on because the defendant, FBI, refuses to produce a single document under the Freedom of Information Act. And when I served a discovery regarding their answers to the complaint, they my discovery is limited to that. And any first year attorney knows that you know you can do discovery. You, that is the purpose of discovery to uh, pierce through the answer to the complaints well, they say, and, and their affirmative defenses included in their pleadings. Well, the FBI says they're not going to do that and that they're seeking a protective order. So we did file this to comply with the court's order, but the truth is that it's up to the court to determine and uh, if they're going to issue the protective order, uh, excluding the FBI from answering uh, the discovery that was served on them. Very good. Thank you for this explanation. And ta-da, we have a lawsuit number three. This was uh, filed on May 30th of uh, this year uh, in the same court. It is called Targeted Justice, the Office of the Attorney General. 
uh, United States Department of Justice. This is also an action under FOIA, freedom of information. And what we are asking here is we seek the immediate processing and time timely release of agency records from the Department of Justice Office of the Attorney General. Specifically, um, we requested all documents by any Attorney General or his or her designee containing waivers to the reasonable suspicion criteria requirements to place to individuals' identities on the terrorist screening database pursuant to a certain rule. And we want all these waivers and documents around it. What I called, I nicknamed it, this lawsuit, show me the waivers. Anna, would you like to expand a little bit about our complaints? Yes, well, the finding of this lawsuit was in and of itself a miracle because on that day, we I had a, an incredible display of helicopters and airplanes messing with my filing. As a matter of fact, you know, the, the file, they interfered with the PACER, which is an official government website. And what you have to ask yourself is who would be interested in interfering with my filing of this lawsuit? Who would have the capability of hacking without any fear whatsoever a PACER, a, an official government website? And I think the answer is obvious. And uh, you, sh you should know, I mean, they, you have to stop doing this. You criminals, you have to stop doing what you're doing. You criminal hackers, it's a crime. And even though you think you're above the law, you're not. Yep. You call them criminals, but officially they employed by our government. Situation. I don't know who the criminals are. I know that they are hackers and, and a hacker that interferes, I'm not saying who it is, I'm saying the hacker that interferes with an official government website is a criminal. And I am going to ask PACER to look into the IPs. They have to, they must be able to trace who is a criminal that was interfering with our filings. I am not saying that somebody specific is the criminal. I'm right. just saying whoever was interfering with my official endeavor in an official government website is a criminal. But we are suing the FBI, so the motivation should come somehow from whoever is interested in interfering in this case. This is just common sense logic, but I understand your legal position is much more sophisticated and complicated. Let's look at the actual uh, Code of Federal Regulation that we cite in our request. This section of the Code of Federal Regulation is called the Waiver Rule. And it says the Attorney General or designee may waive the applicability of a particular requirement or requirements upon a clear and convincing showing that such waiver would enhance the collection, maintenance, or dissemination of information in the criminal intelligence system, while ensuring that such system would not be utilized in violation of the privacy and constitutional rights of individuals or any applicable state or federal law. Very clear and very applicable because 97% of the TSDB are not people, are not suspected, are known as suspected terrorists. They have nothing to do with national security. So 97%, that means a lot of waivers. Please comment on this, Anna. Well, how, how it is, is that the attorney general or his or her designee will issue a document exempting from complying with the reasonable with any of the requirements of this regulation let me explain this regulation applies to any state or federal agency that makes lists of criminals okay or or prospective criminals and the, the way i i came across it is because in texas i researched a case and there was a guy that was put in you know by the sheriffs on um 
dangerous motorcycle gang group. And the, the, the reason why that sheriff had done it is because he had a sticker on his car that he he interpreted it to be part of that gang. So the guy sued. And uh, um, that's where I learned of this regulation. Because Timothy Grow and many others in, in the a TSDB world have talked about, oh, there's people that are put there without reasonable suspicion. But... I did not know, and nobody had talked about this particular regulation, which is where the reasonable suspicion standard comes from. So what this says is basically the attorney or general can exempt any requirement, including the reasonable suspicion. So that's what we're asking for. We're asking for all the waivers that have been issued regarding the TSDB to put innocent people, including babies, on the TSDB without reasonable suspicion. Correct. And a part of that waiver should be all these conditions shown in the last paragraph. Yes. This is a high bar to cross. And without that requirement, it doesn't comply with the regulations. Exactly. Continuing, the last filing I looked up on PACER in this lawsuit is a summon court issued summons to the defendants on may 31st the day after it was filed that's that's just a summons that's just yeah. the document that i use to notify the lawsuit to the defendants but um as we will talk in a little while even getting that summons was a very painful process because the document that i sent to the court was altered as you will show in a little while Lawsuit number four, all on the same date, on May 30th of 2024, in the same court, it's called Targeted Justice versus Office of the Inspector General. It's slightly different, it's still DOJ, but it's Office of the Inspector General. This is also an action under FOIA. Plaintiff Targeted Justice seeks the immediate processing and timely release of agency records from the U.S. DOJ's Office of the Inspector General. And this is what specifically targeted Justin is requesting. All Office of Expect Inspector General's audit reports of the Terrorist Screening Center from the year 2007 to the present. I have a question for you. Is that the last time we have seen an audit? Well, we, we didn't just ask for the audit reports. We also asked for correspondence and for uh, documents uh, responding to the prior audit reports. Yes, we have one audit report from 2009, one from 2008. After 2009, Inspector General, you cannot find a single audit report on the internet about the terrorist screening center. And what's interesting is that in the audit report 2008-16, which anybody can look it up, the internet it's a single space report it's it's i don't know maybe less than 20 pages but it talks and it clearly says the fbi is violating its own regulation because the field offices field offices are sending nominations directly to the tsdb so what's happening here is that for some reason the inspector general has not published or at least not put out publicly in the internet available in the internet uh, the audit report since 2009 on so uh we are asking for not just audit reports but also the correspondence and the documents showing that the uh, you know what what they signaled that said that was wrong with them you know the reply by the fbi basically so that's why we're asking from 2007 to the present because we know that there's a lot of information there about the irregularities and how the terrorist screening center in that last uh, 208-16 we have discussed it many times but it said among other things you know they they fail to remove people when they have to remove them they have people there that shouldn't be there so that's that's uh what we're asking for these are public documents that should be publicly available that targeted justice should not have to sue to get them they should be publicly available Anna, do you think that they just stopped doing the audit reports or they made them confidential? Which uh, scenario is more plausible to you? I don't think they, 
they have an obligation under the law. The Office of Inspector General has an obligation under the law, particularly because the prior audit reports uh, demonstrated so many irregularities. They couldn't just abandon that. So that would be one thing. Uh, I don't think they can make that confidential because it's a public document. It's an audit report of an agency. So I just think they stopped publishing them. But And that's why we're asking for, for them. I, I really think that the reason they weren't published is because they're probably very damning. I don't know. It's, it, you know, I, I don't want to speculate. I just, we, we just want to know if there aren't any after 2009, they have to certify under penalty of perjury that none of them were carried out after 2009. And that's why we're asking for more than just the audits, all the correspondence, document letters, uh, replies, objections, and everything sent in reaction to the Office of the Inspector General audit report since 2007. So I nicknamed this lawsuit, show me the audits. So this is all for uh, for the four lawsuits that, that we filed. Now let's go about the electronic interference that you already mentioned, because I think it reached a whole new level. Now they interfering with court documents. On the left, this is something that you file and the summons contain the defendant's name. And then you receive something from the clerk and said, this is what we received. This section is completely empty. So tell us about the genesis of this interference, please. Well, yeah, when I was filing this, I had I encountered a lot of electronic problems here. The, the summons you in when you sue any agency of the United States, you have to sue. You have to send a copy to the attorney general, which is this uh, this uh, one you put in here. Also, the local Houston attorney, United States attorney and also the defendant, which is the Office of Inspector General. So I did fill out them, the PDFs, you know, as required, and I submitted them. I wasn't gonna submit a blank PDF, but somehow it got erased. Uh, so sh they wrote to me and said, your, your summons are defective. You have to submit them again. So what I had to do was just redo them and make a screenshot of them and put them in the motion saying, these are the summons I am submitting in case somebody erases its content again. So uh, I had to resubmit. And, you know, it, it just looks like I'm a novice and that I don't know how to do, how to even do a filing. And it's not that. It's that the web page through which I do the filing is being jacked with by people that have very powerful equipment and access to it. And, and you know, it, because it's 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 really professional hackers that are hacking the Pacer website. Let's look at the next slide. This is another document, a screenshot that you sent me. Please explain what it shows. Well, this is my folder uh, for the the docket of, of the case, and the ones that start with you know that ds store and that with a little dot all of those it's a malware that criminals put inside my computer making a copy of the correct documents uh, that are listed in the bottom and, and and they just you know they just got into the computer and 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 the hacking is non-stop and that's just another evidence and they don't care to leave a trace because all of this, you know, as you know, that leaves a trace. They don't care. Well, that certainly deserves further investigation. Uh, I'm just amazed that on top of being a lawyer, an attorney, you have also have to have expertise in uh, internet technology because this is clearly uh, cyber hacking. I, I think it, the electronic interference really truly reached new levels with this lawsuit. This is a lawsuit number three. Show me the waivers. Okay. Let me tell you, in, in that context, Lynn, this is really important. Uh, I got, when I was doing my legal research, I didn't get, I wouldn't get the results of the queries I was making. Then I tried to buy another legal research service with case text 
and they completely denied me. They say, no, 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 we can't sell you the product. So in Westfall, I couldn't get the results I needed. It was, I don't know where it was being hacked, if my computer and their servers, I don't know where. And when I tried to buy, purchase the case tech service, it was denied to me. They denied me the product, the sale of a product that is publicly available to anybody, a legal research product. And it's also owned by the same company as Westlaw because Westlaw recently acquired it. So they are refusing to sell me a legal research product. Uh, do you have any plans to reflect that in uh, some of your filings? Can you make a case to the judge that on top of what's going on with the with our FOIA request, there's electronic interference, there's active hacking. Could you make it a part of the case? Well, you see, when you're before the court, you can only ask for the remedies within the lawsuit, right? I can't ask for anything. But I, I think that whoever is doing it, a we have proven that nothing is going to stop us. You might make things a little harder for me. You're not going to stop me. So I will continue working. Like they're trying to hit my head now. I don't care. You're not going to stop me. So I will continue doing what I have to do to set us all free. And we thank you for that, uh, Anna. Uh, you're an example of um, a survivor, a um, 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 example of persistence uh, and um, and okay, I just I can't think of any any words anymore. <coughs> uh, this is what dementia looks like. This is a simplified summary of these four ongoing lawsuits. We. And now at number four, who can remember what uh, everything is? This is a cheat card that I created for our viewers. So, four lawsuits. Target Justice v. Garland, this is our main lawsuit. This is the name of the podcast, and it is on the way to the Supreme Court. Number two, Target Justice of the FBI. I called it, show me the names of the deceased. Number three, target justice versus office of attorney general, show me the waivers. And number four, target justice v. office of the inspector general, show me the audits. Yeah, well, targeted justice is considered a representative of the media because targeted justice publishes, we hit 15,000 subscribers uh, in the um, newsletter, Substack newsletter. And it has over 30,000 views on its webpage a month. So targeted justice qualifies as a representative of the media. And that's why they have a duty to report to the public the malfeasance, negligence, corruption of the government. And this is the foundation of the Freedom of Information Act. A, the reason why Congress passed the Freedom of Information Act. So we, we hope that... Um, this is, this is not about targeting. This is about access to public documents that the public has a need and a right to know. That's what these three last cases are about. I agree. I also read the back and forth uh, correspondence attorney general uh, request and the, the point that they make while you're claiming to be a public uh, media organization, we have a department that decides whether you are. No, it's not. It doesn't go that way. It's it's. It, it, they don't make the rules. The Supreme Court makes the rules of what is a media organization. They don't make the rules. Okay, that's all for today's legal updates. This is a closing page. We have four lawsuits filed with surgical precision. You have to understand how Anna, you found this little points of vulnerability in you and you hit them like a sniper or like a surgeon with uh with this uh, kind of precision i admire your legal strategic mind this is simply incredible 
So thank you, Anna. Thank you. I, I have to say, for example, the, the FBI one, when I was a, when I, I, the only time I had a boss, I worked for a boutique law firm that dedicated to First Amendment law. And that's where I learned that deceased people don't have privacy rights because they sued the newspaper. We represented a newspaper in Puerto Rico called El Vocero, and they sued a newspaper for defamation of a dead person. And so that was one of the cases where I, you know, it came back 25 years later. I'm like, oh, wait a minute. You cannot, you cannot invoke privacy on behalf of a dead person. That's one. And then the other ones was just doing research for TJB Garland that I came across. If you remember, we did a program, uh, a podcast on that a man that passed away in, I think it was Washington State, because he was supposedly on a list of people that were supposedly unfriendly to uh, law enforcement. And he had a heart attack and his son called in, remember? And so that list I thought was, and I have to make a correction, I thought it was a TSDB, but no. Turns out that this regulation that you cited here, and I urge, I urge everybody to look it up in the internet and read it, it's not that long, but it's a smoking gun because it is with that regulation that the federal government has converted our nation into a Stasi state, making allowing sheriffs and police departments everywhere to make lists of unfriendly people in absolute and total violation of the presumption of innocence. So I urge you to look up this regulation and see if and do your FOIAs in your own state regarding how many lists under this regulation does this uh, state have. And, you know, it's one way to start bringing down the Stasi state that has been created where everybody is watching everybody. So let's go to our announcements. The first one is about this Friday events. So on June 7 at 12 p.m. Eastern time, please tell us how this event came about, what it is about, and why it is so significant. Well, as you know, we have had two prior symposiums that we're putting out there for the not just the targeted community, but people that have no clue they're targeted. Because remember, 75% of TIs don't know that they are. They are in handling code four, and like me, for 20 years, I had no clue I was targeted, even though terrible things happened in my life. So uh, we have the honor of uh, the, the collaboration of Todd Callender, who's a very experienced attorney. And when he came across a, our fight of targeted individuals, he became very interested about it. And so he has this platform, which is Back Choice, and we're going to be doing the live broadcast there. I have to correct that we are going to have six attorneys, not just five. There's a, a sixth attorney that is joining us, uh, an attorney from Houston. And it's going to be really good because for all those naysayers, for all those people that say, eh, eh, that's, you know, that's crazy, it's fantastical. No, these are real professionals, um, at least four of whom, four of whom are targeted. And, uh, and we're going to put out there different aspects different aspects of the legal repercussions of the targeting program. So I urge you all, please not only come see it, uh, we're gonna have a live round table talking about potential claims and actions uh, by TI. So we're gonna have a, a live round table. Uh, I urge you not only to watch it, but also to share it with those people that have no clue or that don't believe in the targeting program. Yes, that's very important. And it, when you said almost all of them are targeted, uh, because I recognize one name and one face, it's Jason Neufeld, who is actually, who is not targeted. He is a disability attorney, and he was involved in obtaining disability for my Havana syndrome diagnosis, which is still not recognized by the government uh, in civilians. So, He's not targeted, but he dealt with a real case and he showed us the path to 
disability if one is needed. So real life cases, real life people, real life attorneys, there's nothing artificial about it. So tune in, you won't regret it. Our next announcement is August 28th through 30th. In Colorado Springs, we're gonna celebrate the International TI Day, which is August 29th, but this is a an event that Targeted Justice is organizing. And if you have not been to any of the events prior, like in Washington, D.C., it was in Houston, this year, you simply have to come. And the reason is because there's a shift. There is a very palpable shift in recognition of targeted individuals as a real group. It's no longer a fringe group. Experts are talking about, journalists are talking about, lawyers are talking about, medical doctors, physicians are talking about. So, and we have four lawsuits that are each of them is just like a piece of gold. So this for the first time in all those years, we reached that level of publicity of uh, recognition. So let's push it a little further. And as a courtesy, I provided average temperatures in Colorado Springs. Would you like to add something? Yes, I just want to echo you. This is the most important event that has uh, being planned and we are counting on all of you to go there because despite you know parallel to our legal efforts we need to show those in power that it's not just 10 or 12 crazy conspiracy theorists that are talking about this we need to show them that we are real we are not fantastical that our stories are genuine and I am urging you, if, if there is anything you can do to end your targeting, is join us in Colorado Springs to for the many activities that we are going to carry out. We are going to plan, depending on the amount of people that are going to be there, we're going to hire private security to ensure as much as is possible that no infiltrators or people that come to cause trouble will be there. That's why we're doing a registration because we want to make sure there are no perps and no infiltrators. We want, there There might always be one or two, but we want to make sure these are genuine TIs and we want to put the politicians on the spot to have to talk about this. If we have a huge crowd there, they cannot ignore us. The media will stop ignoring us because it's like the pink elephant in the living room. They cannot ignore us. So please, I urge you, if you can make it, I realize that many of you cannot because of financial constraints. I myself, it was, it was a, for targeted justice, would not be able to make it. But I, I ask you, please, please, if you can make it, make the effort because our lives depend on it. True. Now we're going to play a video and please tell us what we're going to see. Anna. Well, this is, uh, we're making, we're going to make the, uh, I have to clarify that our two volunteers that tried to make the compilation of uh, TI videos, they were so severely attacked with neurosurprise that they couldn't continue. So since my torture menu is different, I started uh, editing them and putting them together, and then we have another volunteer that doesn't have the Neurostrikes either, and he is helping make the big, the long, it's going to be like a 15-minute movie with over 100 clips, but I'm going to be making, this is the first one I made, and I'm going to be making additional ones, you know, about a minute long, because we want to make it known to the world that the targeting, the illegal targeting of individuals is real. So this is a promotion that I, this is my first one. And, uh, you know, I feel like a, a person in the circus with a, with a different uh, juggling act here, but uh, I enjoy doing it. So I hope you enjoy it and please share it. Please share it. Yes, it is uh, posted on social media. But now let's take a look.
I'm Helen, and I'm a targeted individual. I'm Shana, and I am a targeted individual. My name is Edward. I live in the States, and I am a targeted individual. Hey there. My name is Chris, and I am a targeted individual from Salmon, Idaho. Hi, my name is Edward, and I get zapped all over my body. My name is Cassandra Fryer, and I'm a targeted individual. Hi, I'm Richard Lighthouse, and I am a targeted individual. My name is Brandy Willis from New Jersey. I'm a targeted individual. My name is Eva Pop. I'm from Hungary, Budapest. I'm a targeted individual since three years. My name is Rodney, and I'm a targeted individual. My name is Jean Marie Kilcourse. I am a targeted individual. My name is Jim, and I am a targeted individual. Hi. My name is Robbie, and I am a targeted individual. I am Moses, and I am a targeted individual. Me llamo Ana Toledo, and I am a targeted individual. My name is Francis Brady. I'm a targeted individual. My name is Marlena Sky. I'm a targeted individual with directed energy weapons. I am Len, and I'm a survivor. I'm Jonathan, TI from Australia. I'm Bill Peck, and I'm a targeted individual. So, real people, real targeting. Another reason I wanted to, I forgot to mention, for coming to the event this year is that look at the amount of symposiums that we had over the past six months. We had a general symposium about targeting. We had targeted uh, physicians, targeted doctors. Now we have having targeted lawyers. And I just had an idea and tell me if it sounds good to you. Let's do a symposium for targeted journalists. How does, how does that sound? Well, that sounds awesome. Uh, I last week, just last week, uh, one of the podcasters, uh, not podcast, he has a show, uh, Salty Cracker is the second time he talks about being on the watch list. And, uh, he said to a guy that was doing some sort of, uh, person, he, he said, man, stop it stop it you're gonna get on a list on the F the fbi is gonna put you on a list so yeah and you know i think that would be great i don't know if they're gonna come out of the closet like that you know of the targeted closet because many of them uh, are afraid to be called crazy uh, that's why it is so important that if you can make it to colorado make it because we need to show the world like in that video it's real people real faces and it's not about being crazy nobody nobody can make this up that's why that's our message we need to put politicians in the spot to recognize this is happening and express themselves about it you're absolutely right we we have to overcome that public perception oh targeting individuals are crazy this is no longer the case the shift is real. The public perception is changing, and we just need to push it a little, a little further. I will be here, and I will be here. I'm looking forward to meeting a lot of you that we simply corresponded or, or talked on the phone. I am extremely excited about this event. We need to show the rest of the world the reality of our struggle, uh, the reality of the program, the reality of our medical conditions, it's a trauma, trauma-based program, experimentation. The fact that some of us are already been diagnosed with Havana syndrome, the reason that voice to skull is no longer a reason for a psychiatric disorder. In my case, we need to continue that movement. And this is the time, this is the year that you have to make and I'm very much looking forward to it. How about you, Anna? Yeah, well, the, well, regarding the voice to skull, which is the what the court calls fantastical, you know, right now, any doctor that diagnoses a person that has voice to skull with psychosis or schizophrenia is incurring in medical malpractice because the technology uh, information is out there 
the patents are out there and their failure to keep up to date with the technology doesn't excuse them in terms of their professional reckless negligence. So I urge anybody that is going to, uh, you know, we don't recommend going to psychiatrists for, for obvious reasons, but uh, if you do have a doctor that is engaging in this behavior, you could refer them to the V2K tab under the technology tab in targeted justice, because it is their duty to inform themselves and be up to date with the technology that is just, you know, traveling at a, at a pace that they cannot keep up with. And I encourage people who do go to psychiatrists to actually force the conversation. If you're diagnosing me with a paranoid uh, delusional disorder, how did you differentiate it from V2K, which is the U.S. Army term for this technology? And there are about 17 different ways that we counted uh, how you can deliver voice to skull without acoustic signal. Challenge that, doctors. Force that conversation and have that conversation uh, armed with uh, knowledge and uh, factual uh, documents. It, it's, you know, we know in published peer-reviewed literature, the uh, voice to skull phenomenon has been uh, documented in 1975. That's a long time. Okay, I think we covered it, <laughs> we covered it all. And uh, I think we need to say goodbye to our audience. Yeah, well, to everybody, whoever is interested in participating in helping us organize, uh, there's going to be a lot of committees. You can write to Targeted Action 2024 at Proton.me. That is Targeted Action 2024 at Proton.me. And I look forward to seeing you all there. Uh, and, and let's make this a family event. You know, everybody helping and everybody... Uh, we, we invite all sorts of groups, of, of AI groups, to join in. This is not just a targeted justice event. This is open for everybody, and, you know, we can advertise it as such, for all targeted uh, individual groups to join in. It, it, is, it is a movement for everybody's freedom, and you should understand that as such. Thank you. Thank you, Anna. And as to me... We've covered today a lot of territory. We have now four ongoing lawsuit, and um, let's have a conversation. Please ask questions. Until next time.